constant exposure to the gay rainbow flag will cause the photoreceptors in our eyes to be too exhausted. Uh, sorry, that was really ridiculous. <laughs> Oh this God. is real. Yeah. No way. It's a study. <laughs> it's a study. But we are looking at so many colours already. I have nothing to no say comments. about that. Yeah. Because then if I look at this, then I'm just going to be blind. I, like every time I walk into a spray can shop, like all the colours gay. <sighs> okay, I feel bad. Look in the camera and say hi. And smile. Smile. Thank you. <laughs> so she was only 14 and I was only 17 when we first met. And we met while we were underage clubbing. Yeah. Yeah. And then we started staying together after a week. Also. Yeah. <laughs> and then we've just been living together since then. It kinda felt like we know each other for a long time. You took Berlin's with me for more than half a life, lah. Um so we've been friends for a very long time, for three years. And then I was the one that discovered I had feelings for her first. You know, girls, you tend to like, it's very normal, right? Like, you like your friend or you're like a bit touchy touchy with your friend. It's very normal. But then I started feeling weird around her. We met when I was working at an events company um, and I had to go up to him and ask him whether he wanted to buy tickets to the event. Uh, oh, I thought like she was really cute. I, I think I've already yes. like noticed her <laughs> from like, when she first started working there, I really? think. Really? Yeah, I, I, I told you this before. Then, you know, it took time for us to sort things out. Of course, like, you know, is it just a phase? Am I just being curious? Or like, what's going to happen? Are we going to hurt each other? Blah, blah, blah. And then eventually, it was me who kick-started this relationship. But it was her who proposed after six weeks and pushed things to the next level. I proposed for us in Berlin. It was this part with like a, like a really nice pond. There was this like boats that were for rent. And so she caught that and she was like, Do you know usually people like, you know, come to these kind of places before they propose? It was like very funny because I think he was a, like a bit nervous about holding the ring in a body red, of water. A, and I was also very nervous when I saw the ring. I was like, oh my god, you gotta I was like, please careful. <laughs> please be careful. <laughs> right? Hurry, put it on my hand. This one is gonna is drop. Gone forever. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, you said yes. I came from a non-traditional family though. Like not just gay couples or whatnot, you know. We're talking about single moms yeah, and single dads. Yeah, that's why I said like literally I came from a non-traditional family. Uh, I guess it's more of a, a mindset thing. La. Like many, 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 many years ago when people want to have interracial relationships or marriages, people will also have the same kind of understanding and the, that kind of uh, opinions. Okay. That's why for us, mm. we like to live Sorry. in our own bubble. And, and it's more of, you know, having the society to be more tolerant towards us. Uh, no, not yet. Not Soon. Yet. Metaverse married though. Yeah, so. officially Metaverse married. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a thing. Yeah. We'll do a, a local party, like a sort of celebration here first. And then we will sign the paper somewhere overseas. Or oh, it might even be spontaneous because we'll be going to Germany. Yeah, you might just say, hey, got office! Okay, uh, go, sign and then, yeah. <laughs> To be honest, we, we feel like we've been married for a long time already, right? Yeah, correct. We, we still feel that, you know, during <coughs> our time, maybe when we are in our 10s and 20s, we thought that when we are in our 30s, then we can get married legally in Singapore. When we were in our mid-20s, we kind of feel that, okay, like, maybe this will happen in our next generation, not our generation. So then we, we told ourselves that if one day we can get legally married in Singapore, we will do it. But if we can't, then we don't want to spend the excess money overseas for a wedding. Then we come back here, we are still not recognised. So, I mean, we all know that gay marriages are not recognised mm. in Singapore, right? Why then do you want to get For me, at least, like, it's a celebration of our love, of our union, and share, all of us share the happiness, come together in the name of love, really. And, and yeah, just to mark our little union here. Um, well, initially, I never believed in it, but I think it was only when I met you for it that I really felt like this is actually possible, for real. We had a few talks about like the concept of marriage and the mm. idea of marriage. When we travel, or if we move, yeah. I can actually see her in a hospital. I can actually be there for her. And of course, you know, like, um, confirming our, our love for each other. La. I mean, that's, that's a symbolic thing. La. Okay, oh, we okay. haven't planned like our wedding here, 
so we can't say and besides oh, no, okay. it's not recognized. but the difference is that it will be it'll always be more expensive because you have to get out of the country to get married yeah, i was happily reaching out to venues to ask for uh then she was like darling i tell you first ah, you you just have to be prepared okay that they might say no and reject you because of the nature of our way night Oh, it didn't even occur to me. So and we have had a few rejections. So I'm like, oh no, all the venues I wanted to say no. Yeah, they, so it was kind of like, you know, and then she was on the phone and I think it was on speaker or something. And she was just telling me to like, I'm like, I just cut the contact. Because I was still there like, oh, is it? Because I ran the place out to a church um, and you can only do yours on a Saturday. That's like, yeah, okay, that is fine. But then, you know, she's just there like, she was going down a bit Yes, correct. correct. And she already got it from the start. She's like, hi, you this person. But then I was still like, ha, ah, is it? Oh. Saturday, so okay, what? Good, what? Can, what? Then, 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 then finally, the email was like, sorry, because it's not of religious nature, so we cannot go ahead with your request. I'm just like, chee. <laughs> Say that from the start, la. <laughs> Um, at the start, we didn't really ask them whether they were supportive or not. Although we know that you know our family members, they could be supportive of us as a couple, but not supportive of the LGBT community on a whole. Yeah, which is very confusing to us. Yeah, yeah. until when we wanted to start for a family, then we did sit everyone down and tell them about our upcoming decisions. But then with Velda being in the picture, I guess everyone is supportive. Lah. I think it's inevitable that they will be hurt because we are not fulfilling the expectations of us. Um, I know, I know, I am, I am disappointing them. I know. I mean, I'm very, I'm very close to my parents, okay. and I really love them very much, and I don't want to disappoint them. But it was really, really very difficult for me to finally be happy and be at, at a point in my life where. I can really, you know, wake up every day and... Oh no, later my eyelash fall out, it's a sticky one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they will get hurt. Um, because I am not fulfilling their expectations of me or what I should be. And then, you know, my mom says things like, we work so hard to give you a comfortable life. We see you through uni, we give you what you want. And it's true, they have given... My parents have been very good to me. They have really brought me up and my sister very well, given us a very comfortable life. And I'm very grateful for all of that. But it doesn't mean that, you know, I'm not going against them because I'm not happy with them or I'm trying to be rude to them or I'm not being grateful for what they've given to me. It's a personal choice, right? Like happiness and, and all. But they won't see it that way. They'll see it as like, you know, we've done all this for you and then you can't even listen to what we want. I'm not intentionally upsetting them. It's just that this is really my personal choice and I hope, you know, this is for my future as well. I mean, one day, you know, touch wood, they're going to leave the world and I really hope they understand that at least they can be assured that I will be happy. Yeah. Yeah, literally like the only people that we can like not worry about. Yeah. Yeah. About, yeah. Honestly, we can say this because we are lucky enough to actually have that privilege. Yeah. Of this like family. And we cannot say the Sadly. same for a lot of people. It's really not easy though. I think even when we first came out, we were like scared as hell as well. And um, but it is possible. Yeah. Marriage for the pure sake of procreation is problematic on so many levels. It's as if like the woman's only like function or like, you know, it's but they're procreate. also saying that the men's function. Yeah, is exactly. Procreate. And people is only is only to procreate. Okay, I understand how important it is. There are so but many like, issues that are wrong with that statement. People can have kids without being married. People can get married and not have kids. So I feel that there's no no proper correlation to these two these two points. We really don't don't have enough food to feed everybody. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 By wait. this logic, we are helping save the world. So wait, and lower inflation for you and you. Are you guys planning to have kids? And if so, what are some concerns that you personally have? No. Why? Can't we take care of ourselves? <laughs> it's not that. We don't. We like kids who are not our own. Um. <laughs> but if we did, then we would look at other options like adopting. Mm. Yeah, we're planning for a second one with her egg. The fact that if you have to pay a lot of money for it means that you really want this child. Yeah. 
you know, rather than Which might actually up, be better, right? Because then you really seriously consider and then when you know it means you really want it. Were there any like concerns you have? Like, let's say, would it still be okay if two months, you know, Family Because now different. it's a preschool. So we are able to go to the school where we are there to visit the school to ask like, okay, is your school okay with, you know, two mums? What if anybody bully our kid because of this? Even the principal tell us the kids are too young to understand. If there's any bullying, it comes from the kids' parents. As the child grows, I think we will not be able to control what's around the environment. So what we can do is to teach our child well, so that she can handle if the yeah. environment is hostile towards her. Because ultimately, it's her dealing with the people. For the younger couples who want to have a have family, right, we will feel that it's better that they, they seek support from their family. The best is if they can, you know, work towards it and be supportive about each other's decision. For the older generation, it's not really their fault that they don't understand certain things. So maybe just like having that basic education, even before introducing like your partner, Obviously, it's just in theory, like, it's easy to see. But like normalizing that kind of talk and then gradually like feel, for them, it would no longer be a foreign topic or like a topic that they don't want to talk about. I think like for, for me, I want them to think or know that they're not alone, really. Like there is still a community, like, you know, that's rooting for them. I think that's the thing that I would have appreciated when I was coming out. Yeah, we should be given that right to be ourselves and love whoever we want to. Yeah. With consent. <laughs>